one. Hindsighters, welcome to Keeping It Real with Miss T, where we give you the real tea with the twist. I am your host, Miss Ty, and joining me tonight, I have author, leader, and high impact inspirational speaker, empowering people and changing lives, Mr. Rashad Fant. Welcome to the show, Mr. Fant. Thank you. I'm so excited to um, be on here tonight. Absolutely. And I thank you for joining me. So how would you like to be addressed tonight? Formally, informally, Rashad or Mr. Fant? What would you prefer? Rashad is fine. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not big on titles, so Rashad is fine. All right. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Well, like I said, I truly am I'm super excited and honored that you decided to join us tonight so that we can get to know a little bit more about you and what you have to bring forth to the world. So it's some great stuff. So give us a little background on who Rashad Fant is. Well, first of all, I am a devoted father of four, um, a devoted husband going on 18 years. Um, so that's who I am first. Then, um, as you mentioned, I am a um, new published author. Uh, I am a, a motivational speaker, and also I'm a coach. I'm a basketball coach as well. Awesome, awesome. Well, that's good stuff. That's all great things. Yeah. Family first, right? So that takes yes. precedence over all things. So that you know, and congratulations on 18 years. That speaks volumes. So congratulations to both you and your wife on that. Thank you. <laughs> so. Tell me, what does a day look like in the life of Rashad Fant? Because you also stated that you're a coach. And that, I mean, everything you're doing is definitely aligning. You have family, you have your coaching. And with it, we know with even in a family, that takes coaching as well. So what does a right. typical day look like for you in reference to being a coach and a mentor to, now you coach a, um, a youth basketball team? Uh, it's a middle school. Middle school. Uh, middle school basketball team, boys middle school, yes. Yeah, so that in itself, you know, it's a lot, you being a motivational speaker, that all ties in. So what does a day in the life look like for you? Well, like you said, it depends on which day, but um, <laughs> well, we just coming out of, we're just now coming out of um, basketball season here. Um, so it's kind of a little wind down for me, but particularly, um, you know, I'm with, with the guys during the basketball season, um, a lot of planning for games, practices, um, and I spend a majority of my time with those guys uh, at least about six to seven months out of the year. Wow. Um, so a lot of my time goes into, you know, prepping with them. And even in the all season like now, I mean, we still communicate in like a group chat just kind of prepping them over the summer. Um, other than that, um, in between coaching them, I have my own sons who they are playing uh, basketball. So I, I try to get to some of their games, uh, particularly home games. Um, when they're away and I'm not coaching, I travel with them. So I'm pretty busy during the basketball season. Um, it's kind of nonstop. <laughs> wow, wow. Now, is that something that you yourself participated in when you were younger, you know, sports and things of that sort, and this is what kind of trickled down to your family, your boys, and you wanting to be a coach yourself? Oh, yeah. Athletics was um, a big thing in my family. Um, I grew up playing uh, multiple sports, um, so I consider myself as a, well, former athlete, <laughs> but but now, um, you know, that's something that I'm really involved in, and I kind of see it all springing into to my boys. Yeah, that's good stuff, good stuff. Now, when you hear the word family, what does that mean to you exactly? Um, at this point in my life, family, uh, I think legacy, um, building value, um, leaving a legacy, support, um, creating memories. Um, that's very important to me um, as a family, being supportive, creating great memories. And like I said, 
leaving a legacy at this point in my life is very important to me for my family. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Now, inspirational quotes and practical wisdom for life. What and who inspired you to write that book? Well, that book was a combination of things that I just kind of jotted starting back in, I think as early as 2011. Mm. Um, I just started through, through life writing things and um, I wasn't really familiar with Facebook. And when Facebook came along, I think I threw a quote up here and there and people responded. <laughs> um, so that went on for a while. <laughs> and then um, I had a family member who was a doctor now. Actually, she's in my book, so I will credit her. Dr. Andrea Johnson mm-hmm. um, is she's one of the first authors in my immediate family. Um, so she kind of planted that seed, at, but I hadn't launched my book yet. And then there was another young gentleman um, who is uh, actually he's a pastor, Pastor Aaron Miner Jr., he later came into my life and he saw some things I was posting and he kind of just threw the idea out there. He said, man, you should write a book (laughs) and that seed planted. And then a couple of years later, um, I just started, you know, putting that into motion to um, collect all of the quotes that I had just uh, been jotting here and there. And I said, you know, I'm going to take this information here and just kind of put it into a book. So those two particular people really inspired me um, to go forward with writing the actual book. Oh, wow. Now, do you view your writing as kind of a spiritual practice for you as well? Mm, you can you can say so. Um, I, I use it as, as motivation. And um, like I said earlier, it was, you know, these quotes actually came through things that I was um, living and experiencing. So um, some of it is spiritual, but the title fits itself. Some of it is really practical things that you could really use in everyday life. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now we all know that young men often lack having a male role model in their life. And you especially talk about, how you coach and how even right now during we know this COVID-19 virus that's going around that's keeping everybody on edge you're still keeping in contact with your with the young man that you mentor and that you coach what was the turning point in your life where you knew that this was something like I said earlier that you wanted to do and how did it affect you what did you have any was there anything major in your life growing up that really made you want to be a mentor and coach and things of that sort I think the main thing for me was um, I pretty much my uh, childhood and teenage years, I pretty much grew up without my real biological father in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, Fortunately, I did have um, some good role models, males in my life, uh, my uncles um, here and there to really, you know, um, step in and to be a role model for me. But particularly throughout my life, my father was not there. So uh, with me having boys, uh, I kind of wanted to, I didn't want them to experience that and go through that. Mm -hmm. Um, So as I developed my relationship with them, it just kind of all spring into the coaching and, you know, mentoring here and there. So um, I think the turning point for me was not having my father there for me. Hmm. Wow, wow, wow. So now what do you think is the most common reason for people failing or giving up in life? Because like you said, you are an inspirational impact, motivational speaker, and you go out and you motivate and talk to people. So what do you think is the most common reason for people failing and giving up? I think fear. Mm. I think fear of failing is the almost at the top right. fear of not knowing fear of failing um, just uh, fear of what if I don't make it 
um, fear of if I can't do it. I believe fear, fear will paralyze people Mm -hmm. and it will cause you to, or people to not move or go forward. So I would say fear. That's the number one thing that I hear, um, you know, just conversating with people, the fear of not knowing or the fear of failing. Absolutely, absolutely. Now share two things or more that you wish you had known or had learned growing up when you started your career. Um, number one, um, credit. <laughs> I <laughs> wish finances, I wish finances would have been discussed in my home as a child um, more. Um, I wish I could have known about um, how credit operates as a young man mm-hmm. coming up. I think that's when now I know that's very important. Um, I don't know about you, but in my house, finances was, wasn't really talked about mm-hmm. that much in my home or family growing up. Right. So I definitely would say finances and, and credit. Yeah, and I I agree with you. Yeah, same here. You know, you get to the point where you wish that someone would have taught you about that. But hey, it's a lesson that we learned. And I think now, and maybe you the same, that now that we know better, we can do better, right? Exactly. Absolutely. So that's good stuff there. Now, if there is one thing that you could tell your younger self or what anything, what would it be? Um. I think that would be it again uh, for me. <laughs> I would really, uh, I, if I could go back to my younger self, I would really try to learn, you know, about how to operate finances, credit, and mm-hmm. um, and and creating more opportunities for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I was very limited just in sports. Hmm. So for me, I mean, there was, you know, it was, it was, you know, play football, play basketball, play baseball, and track. Mm-hmm. But I do wish um, it was introduced to me, like there again, um, hey, venture off into this area, or see if you like this. So I, for me, I was very limited into just, you know. Um, like most males are, they, you know, one-sided with, um, well, I'm going to play football, I'm going to play basketball, I'm going to the NBA, I'm going to the NFL. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, what about being a doctor? No, I don't know. So <laughs> I think for me, um, I wish I would have had or took more opportunities to learn more things. Okay, broaden your horizons, right? Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, if there's one piece of advice that you could, you know, could impart on the listeners, what would that be as well? Outside of the credit and the finances of what you grew up in, but being a motivational speaker, when you go out to speak to people, what, what would you be able to impart on listeners on how would that look? What type of advice would you give? Um, confidence, Build, building self-confidence. Um, I really key in on that because whatever you do to me in life, if you don't have confidence, it's going to hinder you. Oh, yeah. It's going to hinder you. Whatever you do, whatever profession you're in, whatever sport. um, There again, I mentioned just coming out of basketball season. um, That's something that I tell the young guys on our team um, constantly. Anytime they got defeated, it was either lack of confidence or, um, you know, self, self-infliction on their self. So I try to really instill um, self-confidence, having faith in your ability or your, your skill or whatever you're working in, um, having that confidence of who you are and, and what you're doing. Good stuff. Now, Tell us, what is next for Rashad Fant? You got any other books coming out? What, what other goals do you have you prepared for yourself? What's next for you? I'm in the process of actually working on another book as we speak. Um, I haven't 
quite narrowed the title down yet, but I do know that another book um, is coming out um, probably by the end of this year. That's my goal. Um, also, to another goal for me this year is to speak in more schools. Mm-hmm. Um, I see that that's an area that um, is lacking. There's a lot of lack of male mentors in my area. Um, granted, there are some people out there, but I think it, it could be more male mentors. Mm-hmm. So that's an area that I'm endeavoring to really uh, move into more, uh, you know, once we get past you know, this coronavirus. <laughs> Actually, speaking of that, uh, one of our events got canceled um, this week. Actually, tomorrow, we was, mm-hmm. there was a leadership, um, about 300 students over at Smith High School, um, but that event got canceled due to the current um, circumstances. So um, that's kind of what's in forefront for me. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, I'm trying to push out two more books this year. So I'm working pretty hard. <laughs> Good stuff. Now, keep it up. Good it up now. Okay, well, that leads us into this. Where can our listeners purchase your books and where can they just follow Rashad offline, online, and just get in contact with you if they want to, once again, purchase your books or even have you as a speaker in their schools or outside of their schools. And so that you can just, you know, definitely show them and teach them about motivation because especially from a male's point of view, we really, we really need that for our males. It's lacking. So just share with our Mm -hmm. listeners where they can follow you and find you offline and online. Absolutely. Uh, one of my main source of uh, contacts is my website is RashadFant.com. Um, there um, you can actually purchase my mini book. I have two sizes. Um, I have a four by six pocket size, which is very convenient for students, um, anybody to, um, you know, carry around, put in your pocketbook or what have you. And then also my book is on Amazon as well. Mm-hmm. but it's the five by eight size. So there again, Amazon is the five by eight. And on my website, um, you can actually um, purchase the book. Now on my website, you can purchase the book without no shipping costs. I actually cover the shipping costs if you purchase mm-hmm. the book from my um, website. Um, that's my gift to uh, to my customers at rashadfent.com. Um, on social media, um, Instagram at Rashad Fant, also um, on Facebook, uh, I think it's Motivational Speaker Rashad Fant. So mm-hmm. those are the um, couple of social media places I'm at. Um, but I have some free stuff on my website, um, free downloads that I like to give away um, for my followers as well. Wow. Now that's huge. And that is definitely a way to give back. So you're giving in so many different ways. And I just want to say thank you for joining me tonight on Keeping It Real with Miss T. So everybody, you heard it here. Please visit his website at RashadFant.com. He has his Twitter and his Instagram at Rashad Fant, and then Motivational Speaker for Facebook at Rashad Fant. So please do follow him and invite him out. Come out and support, because as I stated earlier, the male just presence is lacking for our young men and for our young women as well. They need to also know that there are males out there that care and that are present that can show them what a true male figure is that's in their life if that's someone that they do not have. So thank you for joining us tonight on Keeping It Real with Miss T. I am your host, Miss Ty. And Mr. Fant, again, do you have any last words, anything you would like to say to anyone out there? You want to shout out anybody or state what you're grateful for before we leave tonight? Um, yeah, I would like to actually thank my wife. Uh, she has supported me uh, throughout my career. Uh, so I want to actually give her a shout out. Also, I uh, want to give a shout out to uh, Pastor Edward Kirkpatrick. Uh, he's um, very inspirational in my life as well over Abundant Life Church in Greensboro. And, and my son, they support me as well. So I want to mm-hmm. give a shout out to them. Um, if anything, I would say to those that's listening um, in this time right here is to um, really, really um, read things that build your hope, your faith, 
and keep your aspirations alive. There's a lot of things going on right now in our world, as you know. Um, there's a lot of fear. A lot of people are, you know, losing confidence. But that's why I really encourage my book because it really um, horns in on keeping your your hope, your aspirations, and expanding your thinking to continue to pursue your dreams. And that's one thing I encourage people um, in closing is pursue your dreams. Uh, one of my quotes out of my book is, never allow what others can't see to determine what you can't see. Mm -hmm. That has been very foundational to me um, throughout the last five years. And that was actually one of the first quotes I put in my book. It does not matter what others can't see about you, but long as you can see it, you can pursue it and, and achieve it. Wow. Now that's good stuff. Now that's the way to end it there. You guys, you heard it first. <laughs> that is so, that's phenomenal. And so grab, please, 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 please go to his website because as he stated, I mean, you can't get any greater than that with him pushing it forward and paying it for it back to you guys. When you go to RashadFant.com, he is definitely taking care of that shipping for you and has some other nuggets on there that you can look through the site. So please support him and go out and buy his books. You know, as he stated, he has the pocket size. So there's no excuse for you to not have that motivation walking with you throughout your life daily from author, inspirational, high impact speaker, Rashad Fant. So again, it was an honor to have you here with me tonight. And my it hope- It was an honor being here. Thank you, thank you. And my hope is definitely that those of you, you took something away from what he shared and that it will set your feet on fire to move forward and go be the best you that you can be. Again, I'm Ty Barnett with Keeping It Real with Miss T, where we always give you the real tea with a twist. Please visit our website at www.hindsightmediaradio.com, our Facebook at Keeping It Real with Miss T, hyphen T with a twist. Again, Mr. Fan, I thank you so much for joining us tonight, and we look forward to so many great things coming from you. And tell your wife, thank you for keeping you in line. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a great night. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good night.